I can't believe we're already here. Episode five of Can It Be a Mead? So let's get started. All right, by this point, hopefully you know the rules. Two different wheels, a bunch of different ingredients on them. We're gonna find out for episode number five what are ingredients we have to use for this. Now, um, I have to use these two ingredients specifically. I can add some other things in if I need to or want to, but I'm gonna try and stick as close to these two as possible. So let's go ahead and do it. The first wheel has a bunch of uh, fruits and a bunch of various things that you see on here. Let's go ahead and spin it. I'm gonna shuffle a few times so we get a randomizing. And our first one is, let's see. We're gonna be using a, oh, I almost had a nothing. Okay pomegranate i have recently been working with pomegranate so that's not bad i can i can do that pomegranate um let me get my second wheel out so we can get the other flavors all right and here's our second wheel it has a bunch of uh spices and various weird flavors on it like peppers and nutmeg and cumin and there's a choose two um let's just see what we're going to be using now for our second ingredient we have pomegranate and oh oh Oh, that was almost a choose two. Clove, pomegranate and clove. I have never, I mean, I've used clove before with um, the Joe's Ancient Orange Mead because it calls for it. However, I've, however, I've never used it in like any other thing. So I gotta get pomegranate and clove. I'm definitely gonna be using pomegranate juice because I found it works really well. So I'm gonna get pomegranate juice. Uh, clove is pretty easy to get as well. I'll tell you this, I'll go buy all my ingredients and then I'll tell you my grandmaster plan. All right, I've bought ingredients. Here we are ready to make this mead. Now I had to um, think about how to do this because I do think pomegranate and nutmeg is quite the interesting combination. I have right here for pomegranate, my pomegranate flavoring. I'm gonna be using pomegranate juice. This is something I get at Aldi. Uh, the most important part of this is it has no preservatives, zero sorbate or metabisulfite, anything like that. We are gonna be using a grand total of, uh, I believe this right here is a half of a gallon of pomegranate juice. It's very strong. I don't need a full gallon of it. We're gonna use another half a gallon of water, so half a, gran half a gallon of pomegranate juice, half a gallon of water, uh, the Lauvin K1 V1116 yeast, about two grams of that, and I believe two pounds of clover honey. I don't know exactly what my total ABV is gonna be, um, but I'm curious about that. I'll throw that recipe up there. So the big thing is, pomegranate is a strong flavor, the clove is gonna be put in the secondary. That'll be up there as well. From what I understand of clove, generally um, you don't have to put a lot in to try and get that clove fl flavor. So this is, or these are whole cloves. I'll probably only have to put one, maybe two cloves in the secondary. And I'm putting them in, in the secondary because they are a strong flavor and I can more so control when they come off in that time. Now I've sanitized everything. I always fill a bucket with some some water, put some sanitizer into it, rinse everything so everything has been sanitized. We're gonna go ahead and mix our ingredients, like I just said from my recipe. Uh, my first step is going to be to rehydrate my yeast. And so I'm gonna go ahead, and I've already used half of this packet. I know I said two grams, um, but I know I previously took two and a half out of this. So I'm just gonna go and dump that in there. That's probably about two and a half grams of K1V1, and to rehydrate, we're gonna pour this water on top. This is just room temp water, and it's going to, um, the yeast are gonna start to wake up. Now let's take and combine the rest of our, ingre the rest of our ingredients and uh, get this going. So let me do that. Everything is mixed together now and my gravity reading is currently setting at, with all of our ingredients in there, 1.08, probably, probably about nine. So 1.089, not quite 1.090. Um, 
I believe that is roughly in the realm of a 10, 11, maybe 0.3 to 5% mead. I'll be putting it on the screen. I use a calculator to help me with that. That's my rough estimate. You can always use the back of the hydrometer to find out as well. Um, that's pretty good. 11% is a decent ABV mead. And I believe for this thing, because it is kind of weird, it might need some more body to like maybe make it better. Who knows? All right, so my ingredients are mixed in. My yeast have been waking up and they are now ready to go in. We're gonna just dump them straight into this. So they will start to ferment here in the next, hopefully 12 to 24 hours. We are gonna help them ferment um, by adding some yeast nutrient. My yeast nutrient of choice today is called Fermax. It is dimonium phosphate, uh, dipotassium phosphate, magnesium, blah, 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 basically. Oh, and auto, autolyzed yeast, which is essentially dead yeast that other yeast eat. Um, if, uh, if you don't have access to something like this and you're at home, you can use, uh, if you don't have any access to yeast nutrient, you can actually boil baker's yeast and that will kill it. And that's also a yeast nutrient. Um, so that's one way to do it. Or if you're really in a pinch, you can throw some raisins in, but it doesn't really um, actually add that much nutritional value. I did a whole video on it, go check it out. So this is uh, one, we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons to this. And I'm gonna stir this up a little bit more. My last little thing before I put this away to start fermenting, I am doing this in a bucket. This is a two gallon bucket because the, gr the total volume here is about 1.3 gallons. After sediment, it will come down to maybe 1.1 gallons, which will be perfect for putting into a glass carboy and it will leave me with zero headspace. So I'm gonna stick my airlock onto this thing, put my label on it, or put my information so I know what it is, write down my stuff, and let it ferment. So here is after the primary. All right, it's been eight days since the pomegranate and clove mead has started fermenting. I know it for a fact is done fermenting for two reasons. One, I saw the air, the airlocks blow down, I looked inside, I don't see any um, bubbling, and any bubbling I do see looks like some slight degassing, so this thing is is finished, or I will hopefully believe it's finished. It did not finish dry. I think there might be some non-edible non sugars in there for the yeast, so we ended at 1.002, yeah, that's right. So starting gravity was 1.089, final, Final gravity, current gravity is 1.002. I have a taste test of it. Let's see what it's like after only eight days. Again, eight days is a super young mead. I don't have high expectations. So, it's got a um, cherry strawberry mixture smell to me, which I guess is a pomegranate essentially. Yeah, it's retained the um, floral, not the floral, the fruity character from the, uh, from the pomegranate. Let's try it. A little sour. Ooh, very sour. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. It's just, it's um, very, makes my mouth pucker. That's a sour drink. Um, it's still pomegranate-y, pomegranate-y. It's the sour side of the pomegranate. There's not a lot of um, bright notes from it, and I, I kind of want that. So, it's not bad. It's de definitely very earthy, very, um, it's got a little boozy taste to it because again, it's very young. So the alcohol content is just right in your face. Um, I don't get a ton of honey character, which is one thing that I want. I want more honey bolstering. I get a very juice-esque taste right now, even though we only used half, basically half juice, half water. Uh, I want some more honey character. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and rack this over into this carboy right here. And then we're gonna let it, I'm gonna actually put in the clove. Before I back sweet and do anything, I wanna put the clove in and we're gonna see if we can get clove taste to be where we want and then we'll add the honey on top of that. So let me go ahead and rack this over. All right, got our full carboy here, racked over. The good thing about going over one gallon with your starting um, amount is that you end up with the one gallon in total. So this right here, without me spilling it, there is some stuff left at the bottom that's a lot of sediment. There is a little bit of mead left. However, I was able to transfer into this 
with exactly one gallon and I even still have some here to play with. So um, I of course will probably just drink this stuff. We are going to now take our clove. Now cloves are strong flavors, strong flavored in general. Um, I am gonna add one for, for right now. So I'm just literally going to, I could put this in a brew bag or something. Instead, I'm, I'm just going to drop it in and we're gonna let it go ahead and impart flavor for X amount of time. So that, yep, already sank to the bottom. Now, I don't know how strong that'll be. It could be a matter of days before that clove has imparted enough flavor. Um, I guess what we're really gonna do is find out. So I'm gonna let the clove sit in here. I'll tell you how long it sits, and then we'll be back to decide the next steps for this. I have been taste testing this fairly regularly. It's about seven days after I put the whole clove in there, and I'm gonna tell you what I'm getting now currently. There's a lot of um, bitter, kind of pungent taste from the pomegranate. The, the nut, not nutmeg, the clove, I keep wanting to say nutmeg. The clove has this, um, it's also a, like a, a very pungent taste. Sometimes you can think it has some heat to it, which I'm getting that partially because of alcohol. It's hard to figure out if it's alcohol or the actual clove. That definitely adds, there's just a lot of bitterness from this already because it is, um, it's pomegranate, which has some bitterness to it. And I do think that this has plenty of clove in it because I get bitterness on top as well. And uh, if I can figure out how to rack off this clove without actually, um, you know, racking everything out would be nice. But yeah, I think this is at a great point. A clove is one of those hard flavors for me to say, like what, like what it is. I have a hard time being like, this is clove. Um, so I don't know, I just, I think it's good. I like where it's at. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rack this off of it. Like I said, if I can figure out how to do it without actually having to rack everything out, out that'd be awesome. But I'm gonna see if I can figure that out real fast. All right, I literally went fishing for the clove for like 10 minutes, didn't work. So I just racked it over into here. I probably needed to anyways, cause there's some sediment and stuff at the bottom of this that needed to come out. Um, I am gonna do a little experiment. I do think this needs some back sweetening because it's very tart, very bitter because of the pomegranate juice and the clove. So in this hand right here, this is a sample of it with just regular clover honey, uh, just a little, a couple drops. And this is some buckwheat honey that I have put into this version. So it's obviously changed the clarity quite a bit, but we're gonna see which kind of honey I wanna add to back sweeten. The clove honey really, I mean, I think all honey is gonna con uh, contrast against the bitterness because it's gonna bring some sweetness into it, but specifically it brightens it up, um, takes away some of that tartness, some of the acidity that I'm getting. Yeah, I mean, it's already bright. I think that the buckwheat could be interesting because it's a dark honey. It could really contrast. Let's try it. Ooh, I like this. It is um, definitely contrasting the bright notes we're getting. It's helping to fill out a character that's like necessary. We're getting sweetness, of course, because it's honey, but there's also this molassesy, dark, roasty taste to it. It just like meets in the middle. We have dark, we have this bright from the pomegranate, from the clove, kind of coming in the middle. Not, it takes away a little astringency as well. I think between the two, I definitely think I'm gonna go with the buckwheat honey. Now, in order to do this, there's something important that we have to do, and that is this, as it currently is, even being racked over, if I put more honey into it, we're gonna have re-fermentation. I don't want re-fermentation. So I need to stabilize this with two things, potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite. Some people aren't a fan of using these things, and that's okay. I am, because I think that they are helpful for stabilizing a brew. A couple other ways you can do this, including pasteurizing, you get cold crash, but it doesn't really do the whole job. So I'm gonna add my sulfite and my uh, sorbate to this. Let me go ahead and do that real fast. All right, I've added my sorbate and sulfite. You can already see, you might see some foaming here and that's because the yeast are a little angry <laughs> now that they're getting um, contested. So this will take about 24 hours to settle in and then we can go ahead and add our buckwheat honey. 
The sorbate is a stabilizer, halting yeast fermentation. This, the sulfite is a preservative, so this will hopefully be able to last longer, and the combined, they just truly stop the yeast. So I'm gonna put my airlock back on this. We're gonna let it set for another 24 hours and we're gonna call it good and go from there. So here is in the future with some back sweetening. Okay, so it's been 48 hours since I added the uh, sorbate and metabisulfite. The current gravity is 1.000. Uh, before it finished at, I think it was 1.002. So not quite dry, but because of time, it has dried itself out. Um, I'm gonna use my buckwheat honey that I decided uh, would be best for it. So let me go ahead and mix in however much honey I feel like I need to back sweeten it enough, and then I'll take another gravity reading. So let me go ahead and do that real fast. Okay, I've got it to a point where I feel like it's um, not too bitter. The pomegranate is pretty calm. The clove uh, bite astringency is also kind of gone. Yeah, the buckwheat honey is popping through. There's sweetness from the honey. You still get the pomegranate uh, flavor as well. It's pretty complex, honestly, but it's very good. I like it a lot. Um, I put a lot of honey in. I put roughly about a third of a pound of honey in. So, um, I mean, that's a fair amount to get it to where it is sweet enough. The current gravity reading is 1.020. So we went up uh, 0 0.02 gravity points, which is a lot. Um, and I'm okay with that. So now the next step is going to be to put the airlock back on, make sure there's no re-fermentation, and then we can go ahead and bottle it. We just don't want to, we want to make sure there's no bottle bombs, especially with that much sugar in here. There could be a chance that the yeast pick back up, and then if they did that in the bottle, it'd be bad news. So I'll be back when we're ready to bottle this thing. It's time to bottle. It has been a couple more days, no re-fermentation, so we're good. Let's taste test it just to make sure we're good. Ooh. Yeah, that's fantastic. The pomegranate has like a clinging effect to your mouth because of the tartness of it. And then there's a sweetness from the buckwheat. There's like that molasses-y taste, kind of gets in your nose as well. Definitely sweet, but I like it. I think it's pretty good. All right, let's bottle this thing. We're gonna fill up all our bottles, cap and cork them, do all of those things. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay. Everything's bottled, and some of you are going, well, this was really quick for you to bottle this. You should have aged it longer. It is gonna age like this. So this total process right now, we're at about 30 days. And yes, I could have let this thing bulk age for a long time. However, because of space and my desire to start more projects, I've decided to bottle age this. It could have, you know, uh, bulk aged. Now, I got quite a few bottles, and uh, I'm definitely curious to see how they turn out and age over time. Um, I am going to now invite a friend to help me decide if this means, or if this can, be a mead. So, let's go over and see what my friend thinks. And here we are with the taste test. I have my friend JT here. He is uh, one of my good friends, and I, of course, I always try to bring in somebody who uh, will help me say if this can be a mead. So, welcome JT. Thanks for having me. Hey, happy you're here. So, you guys have seen the whole process of this, but JT, let me explain briefly to you, this is a, a pomegranate mead that used yeah. pomegranate juice and of course honey and then clove, which we had talked a little bit about and um, you know tasted some of it. But I put a, a piece of clove in there and went through all the fermentation process. So it, there's a lot more than that, but to save time. All um, right. So first of all, this is, I just want you to tell me for good or bad, it doesn't matter I, if you think this is a good combination. So a pomegranate and clove. Pomegranate and clove, specifically, yes, yes. Like just off the top of my head, if I think it's a good. Well, no, 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 no. Like tasting it. Oh, right, after I taste it. Yeah, okay, I got you. yeah. All right. So let's try. I haven't tasted this in probably two months, so. I think this is really fun. <laughs> I will say one interesting thing about this. It's gonna have um, you might notice like a little grassy hay molasses -y taste to it, and that's from a specific kind of honey I used called buckwheat, which okay. tastes kind of like those things, like yeah. I just said. I'm picking up the clove, for sure. Mm -hmm. This thing is very, very clear, too, which I'm surprised. Surprisingly. Yeah, I like the color on it, too. Yeah. And I'm picking up the pomegranate. Yeah. Probably about 50-50. Uh -huh. I'm liking it. Well, and, and the honey. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, um... I'm very pleased with with the, how this has turned out. Again, like I just said, 
this is like two months post your last time you saw anything mm -hmm. I did with this. So, I mean, the, the, the two ingredients themselves, I feel like can go together pretty well, but based on just my performance alone, again, if you're watching this and you want to make this on your own, go do it. I challenge you to, because I think that'd be fun. What do you think of my attempt at making a, a pomegranate and clove? Can this be a mead, the combination? When I first heard about it, I was a little skeptical, <laughs> but after tasting it, I would say it's a really fun mead. It turned out pretty fun. Sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Well, um, this has been the episode number five of Can It Be a Mead? If you would like to see the other four episodes where I have put together arguably even crazier ingredients, um, go check those out. But thank you, JT, for coming on and helping me taste this. I hope you've enjoyed the ride, and, uh, you know, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.